Welcome back. Bronx Works Homeless Outreach Team, or HOT, is a mobile unit that works with homeless individuals on the streets 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And their work has not stopped a year into the COVID-19 pandemic. Joining us now to share more are HOT Program Director Juan P. Rivera, Clinical Coordinator Sara Zamilio, and Outreach Coordinator Isa Acedo. Welcome all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Happy to be here. So first to start out, um, for folks that don't know, I, I gave a little bit of an intro for Bronx Works Hot Team, but you can give us a little bit more. Um, can you tell us about the Hot Team and your mission? Sure. Um, so the Bronx Works Homeless Outreach Team is a 24-hour outreach team. We're uh, contracted by the city, um, and we've been doing the work here in the Bronx for many years, um, probably about 20 years or so. Um, and, you know, our goal, our mission is to reduce and hopefully one day eliminate street homelessness. Um, and we do that, you know, sort of with different strategies that we've been using for, for many years that have been successful. Um, and, you know, what we try to do is, is we use our 24-hour outreach team that does the canvassing on the street to really identify the folks that are, that are out there who may need assistance. Um, and we try to focus on the most vulnerable individuals. Um, and try to get them inside um, using our resources that we have. You know, we have several options for transitional living that we can put folks into um, to kind of get them, you know, under you know under a roof and and start working with us on things um, that perhaps they haven't you know worked on in a while, like their health, you know, whether physical or mental health, um, and getting them sort of you know working in that in that process of of eventually getting into permanent housing. That's the goal. Um, and we use a case management team to kind of support folks, you know, once they come in. Um, and, you know, that's sort of our strategy. We kind of divide the work up. We have an outreach team that does the canvassing and identifying and really, um, you know, being out there in the community. And then the, the case management staff <clears throat> really sort of works one on one with the individuals to get them you know, whatever they need. It's not it, it's ultimately it's about housing, but we do a lot of different things along the way, obviously. Um, and um, and that's really worked for us. Um, it's it's a it's a sort of you know a tried and tested method, and, and it's worked really well for for the folks here in the Bronx that we serve. Thank you, Juan. Thank you for that. Um, and how has the hot team continued to work and respond to needs, especially during the pandemic, throughout this entire year? Yeah. So we you know we've transitioned a lot more seamlessly than one would think. Um, most of our work really is very. Uh, quick on the fly and so we're pretty accustomed to having to adapt very quickly to things and so you know some of the main things that we've really done to adjust to the pandemic i would say one of the biggest ones is changing staffing schedules so that we have staff kind of in a scattered manner um, which really has worked out for us because now we have staff working later in the night and we can catch some of our more uh, difficult to find clients street clients and you know another big thing we've done is transition our psych services to telehealth um, and we've been able to reach a lot more people we're able to bring um, phones and tablets down you know under bridges and the street locations um, and access people that really we haven't historically been able to access that well in terms of like bringing into the office and getting um, mental health services so that's really been a huge change and you know we're just working with different providers right now to try to get um, vaccines and testing available to our clients. You know it's really difficult to reach a lot of our clients, so we're trying to work through a couple of different um, avenues to make that accessible. Um, and then we're having a supply really of sanitizer and masks that uh, ESA's team will have out has out in the street um, pretty much at all times, handing them out to clients. So I would say those are the the biggest changes that we've had to adapt to. So there's definitely, you know, a big silver lining um, throughout the pandemic and your work has not stopped, as I said, you know, so thank you all, you know, for your work and continuing this, uh, this important work in our borough. Um, and although the winter, I mean, the weather is becoming warmer um, nowadays, we had a really, really long winter and it's been really frigid out mm -hmm. there. We're still facing fluctuating cold temperatures um, even now. How does the team prepare for these frigid nights? And, you know, I know that you have cold blues and cold reds. Could you help us define these and tell us how you work through the frigid temperatures? Yes. So the cold blue is uh, the initiative where, you know, when it's under 32 degrees, we have a list that we uh, that we prepare for our most vulnerable clients that we know are in the street. And so we focus on making sure that we uh, check on these vulnerable clients during the cold blue whenever it's below 32. 
And the cold red is when it's uh, like really, really hot and it's a heat wave and we continue to focus on them same vulnerable clients. Um, and we make sure that we see them in, in uh, a certain time period to make sure that they're, you know, they're not uh, fro uh, uh, freezing to death when it's a cold blue and overheating or uh, like catching strokes and stuff in the heat and, and like when it's uh, a heat wave. So, you know, you, we all know that March is a tricky month. It's 70 degrees one day, 32 degrees the next day. So we just continue to visit these clients and let them know that even though it's 70 degrees today, the temperature might drop at night. Um, and we try to convince them to come in. A lot of the clients that we do uh, encounter in the streets, some of them already have beds. So when it's, whenever it's cold or whenever it's hot, we can take them to their certain bed that they add where it's either uh, AC or it's um, somewhere warm during the cold blue. We also have something, uh, a warming center in the Bronx that we also can take people to so they can keep uh, warm during uh, really uh, frigid temperatures and stuff like that. So we just keep, uh, you know, engaging people and meeting with people and, and checking on them as well, no matter what the weather is. And always planning ahead. Um, thank you for that, Isa. There's something um, going around about them just being more susceptible to the coronavirus. Is this true? Um, and how's the Bronx Works hot team addressing the contributing factors? to the virus and, you know, homelessness? Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know that it's necessarily true that the population is any more susceptible than, you know, maybe the general population. I mean, I think um, I'm talking about really the street folks. I mean, the people who are on the street, um, I think for them, it's more about, um, you know, education and making sure that, <clears throat> you know, we're getting um, PPE and things that they might need on the street. Um, you know, where a person who's street homeless may not have access to a lot of information, um, you know, versus somebody who's inside um, and may have access to a TV or to the Internet. Um, I think, you know, in terms of the folks that are inside, like, for example, at our drop in center or, um, you know, in any one of our uh, settings where we have beds or, or rooms, you know, we, we have done a lot of work to make sure we're in compliance with CDC regulations. Um, in terms of spacing and just making sure that folks are not, you know, on top of each other and um, that we're testing and that we're doing the things that we need to do to prevent um, any potential, you know, spread or, or you know, um, and we've been, you know, really fortunate we have not had any kind of outbreak or any kind of serious um, issue like that um, amongst the population that, that we worked with inside. On the street, we also haven't sort of seen that that spread that we thought maybe initially when all of this happened that we thought might happen. Yeah, and to just uh, um, mention that when the outreach team is out, we also have PPE in the vehicles. So we also supply clients with masks, hand sanitizer if they need it and stuff like that. Uh, and then we also ask questions about, you know, if, uh, if they have a fever, stuff like that. Um, you know, health questions as far as like, um, surrounding uh, coronavirus and stuff like that. Got it. Um, something that Sarah brought up um, is vaccination and getting people access to the vaccine. Um, is that something that New York should prioritize, getting the homeless population access to the vaccine as well, priority list? I mean, I, I think that um, anyone who is vulnerable, whether they're uh, homeless, street homeless or not, um, should be prioritized for vaccines. Um, so, you know, we've, we've been able to set up folks with uh, some of the vaccine sites that are already open. Um, we've had some success there. And, you know, uh, our medical director actually recently got access to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, so we've been we've been doing that here at the drop-in center uh, recently, and that's been successful. Um, and, you know, the Johnson & Johnson is one shot, which is great um, because, you know, you just have to get the person there one time. Uh, versus the other ones where you, you know, you might get the person there the first time, but if you're talking about a street homeless individual, you might not find them the second time around, or there's a time period of, you know, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. Um, so, you know, we've been fortunate there, but yeah, I mean, everyone who's vulnerable should be prioritized. Um, so, you know, we, we continue to sort of make sure that our folks are, are on that list and that we can get them the vaccine if they want it. 
Absolutely. And I think um, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier with the COVID mm -hmm. question, but um, I did want to bring up that one study showed that the COVID-19 mortality rate of sheltered homeless people in New York was 75 percent higher than the city's entire rate. Um, there is no note of unsheltered homeless mortality rates. Is there a challenge mm -hmm. or disparity of counts for this population in particular? I mean, we can only speak for what happens in the Bronx uh, in mm -hmm. terms of our street population. I mean, I think, um, you know, we haven't we have been here, you know, the three of us the entire year that this pandemic has gone on. And, um, you know, I, I can honestly say that we haven't seen um, a, an increase or a large increase in mortality rate um, based on COVID. Um, and I think if you look at the uh, the annual report on on deaths of, of street homeless individuals uh, or persons who are experiencing homelessness, um, you know the last report for 2020 we we had two people that um, that passed away on the street um, who were identified as homeless. So I, I think you know that speaks to you know low mortality rate or, or you know basically us kind of doing what we do in terms of identifying vulnerable folks. Um, and making sure that we're addressing, you know, whoever's out there. But, but yeah, I mean, overall, I can't say that we've seen this um, this increase um, in mortality based on COVID. Got it. Um, I wanted to ask. So, there's something else. According to the IRS, people experiencing homelessness may be eligible for a $1,200 economic impact payment. Is this true? Is this something that Bronx Works Hot Team has been able to identify? Yeah, so we uh, have case managers. Part of our team is about 12 case managers who um, work with clients on housing. And so they also help uh, with a lot of other things. And they have been able to secure um, some of those payments for our street clients, as well as our clients in transitional sites. Um, and those for those who have not, we've uh, now, because it's tax season, we're actually setting up appointments for clients who want to kind of backtrack that uh, payment and try to get it in their taxes. And so we've been bringing people in actually through BronxWorks. We have a free tax preparation program um, every year during the season. And so uh, we've been bringing clients in to get it that way. And that's uh, so far we've had some success. I think, you know, where our barriers come in as far as I did, like setting something up like this for our clients is really, you know, when it comes to not having a stable address, you can't have the IRS send the check to mail it to you. When you don't necessarily have a lot of financial literacy, you can't, you don't may not have a bank account for that direct deposit to come in. So we're always trying to, you know, wrangle with those kind of challenges. Well, that is incredible news. And, you know, thank you for sharing that, Sarah. I wish we had more time, but we have to go. We are running out of time. Um, but I did want to share um, folks with folks, how, they, how can they support the Bronx Works Hot Team and reach out to contact you for more information, as well as, you know, help out when they see someone who needs help, how can they get in contact with you? Well, um, we have a, a 311 alert, so uh, they can reach out to 311 um, if they see a homeless client in the street. And we would uh, answer that response um, or that alert uh, request that they have. Another thing that we do is we work with uh, community board. We, we go to a lot of community board meetings and we meet with different people in the community and we try to have like a partnership as far as working with the community because they know that their community better than we do. And we can uh, work together about finding clients that might be staying in the building, staying on a roof because we only look in public places. We don't go inside of private places. So we uh, look for the community to help us with homeless people that we might miss that might be inside of a building and stuff like that. 311 is the big key, I was going to say, yes. <laughs> Thank you again, Juan, Sarah, and Isa from Bronx Works Hot Team, the homeless outreach team for your work and continue work in our borough. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. To find out more information about Bronx Works, you can also visit bronxworks.org or contact Jay Rivera at bronxworks.org for more information on Bronx Works Hot Team. The number is 646-393-4070. That's all for our show today. I'm your host, Santi Lopez, wishing you and your family safety and wellness now and always. Take care.